All right, so 102 days in. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cultists. So three more needed at least the first 12. And now we're kind of in desperation mode to try to get our hands on some ranged guys. Oh, what's that? Some thugs, a few marksmen. We could maybe take that on, but I mean, some of the lads are injured. Is, is the armor, yeah, our armor is fully repaired. Okay, that's a fight we can actually win then. Especially while it's dark, and there's some thugs here. The thugs will help us shatter their morale. Okay, good, they are actually coming forward. Anyway, we need to look for some ranged lads. <laughs> And if we get anyone with, I mean, they don't have to have amazing stats. Even if they just have, I don't know, 40 ranged skill, that'll just have to do. We just need someone that can shoot for us. And we're going to get crossbows. Stop, Martin. Saying we're going to get crossbows. Uh, and hopefully buy them some handguns. But of course, as is almost always the case with these cultists, is that we've just got to be super, super patient. We're going to have to be incredibly patient. It's just going to take a long time. Oh. We do, we do for another sacrifice event. I have me playing off stream now. The band that I'm playing off stream is Peasants. Peasant campaign going off stream. Locking. And then I forgot how amazing it is playing peasants having 16 brothers on the field. Oof. Uh, I, should, I could actually check. So today's YouTube upload should be the most recent one. Should be. Kill him. Yarne. Steady stab. I think I want to grab high ground here. Actually, there was a pointless attack, as is this. The Van, Van Thorn should be able to lash this guy to death. Nice good hit. And here we're seeing the power of these lads with the flails. <clears throat> they are of course going to fall off, but they're going to do a lot for a lot of enemy types. Or against a lot of enemy types for us. They're actually going to be pretty damn good against uh, ancient legionaries. Because like in my peasant mob, I feel quite axe heavy. I can break shields. These lads just go straight through the shields. Or straight past them. More accurate to say. And I've been fighting some southern bandits with my peasant mob in the southern part of the map and the three-headed flail, I must just check its stats, I get the feeling it was actually buffed because yeah I had a I had a three-handed flail nomad guy like two shot one of my nerds he was a level seven nerd he had nimble and everything I shouldn't have died that quick but I think maybe it's just the headhunter buff because now if you want to hit the head twice, you don't have to actually use Lash twice. Well, the thing is, these flowers aren't going to do a whole lot against the, uh, the Ancient Dead or the Honor Gods, but it's going to be consistent damage at least. And the thing is, um, you could argue that with an Axe Heavy lineup, you have to spend one or two turns breaking shields. Whereas here you don't have to, you can just start attacking straight away. I think focus firing will be the key thing in those fights. But... I don't know. I mean, eventually I want to be quite mace-heavy with these lads. But is he fleeing? Good. But if we're going to go mace-heavy, then we do need access to break shields. But the thing is, I am quite happy to realize now that in a lot of my campaigns, I have like two sets of lads, pretty much. The first set of lads is, you know, it's the early to mid-game lads. 
And then you have your mega late game lads. And this is something I want to reiterate to new players as well. You mustn't get uh, dis disheartened if you are struggling in the beginning. Really, I mean, your, your first 250 days is just getting your warband established. Which is very much the phase we are in. Especially, and even more so with cultists, because you just want cultists. Like, what stats they have doesn't really matter. Even if not even one of them has any long-term potential, that's fine. Because we just want to get some basic guys who can do missions and earn money and farm raiders, with the be which is where the best money is. I mean, we're still only at 9 out of 12 cultists. We have to get to 12 first. I was thinking while I was making coffee that it's unfortunate that Mizuma has the highest ranking of Dovkul Devotion because he's our monolith tank and you want your Bannerman to have the highest level, you want him to be the prophet because you want him to be spamming the AoE plus fatigue, you don't want your tank who's off on one side of the map be the one who's spamming uh, the points and fatigue recovery we're we going to need him to be in heavy armor, he does not have good fatigue but Uh, we may as well go battle forward but then again i mean he has he gets plus 17 fatigue per turn and if he slashes twice he only spends 16 so it's awesome we could go berserk it's arguably not worth giving him battle forged until we have some heavy armor what's up uh it's Cree. My monolith tank, I think I might actually want to go Colossus. We'll go Taunt. Go. So we got a perk at 9, 1 at 10, and 2 at 11. So what's mandatory for this heavy monolith tank? Battle Forged is mandatory. Lone Wolf is mandatory. Indom is mandatory, so it doesn't get stunned. And what else? You could say Fearsome, but no, not for him, not for a tank. I mean, he's going to be in heavy armor, but I do think that Colossus is going to be worth it. They're not going to be getting Berserk. We'll get Lone Wolf last. The only reason he's going to have Lone Wolf is because when, when it comes time for him to fight with the Black Monolith, he's going to literally run off by himself, and then that's going to give him 15% melee skill, melee defense, and resolve. Hmm. No point giving him Indom now until the entire front line has Indom. What did I say I was going to give him? Lone Wolf, Battle Forged, Indom. Taunt is actually not going to need in the Monolith fight. Taunt just helps me in all the fights before then. I think I got Colossus. I was going to say that should give him more, but he should have like 120 fatigue now. No way, it is hit points. From 71 to 88, it should have gone higher. Hmm. We are going to pick up Battle Forge, but I'm not going to give it to him yet because he doesn't have any armor that it's worth giving to him. He'll get Battle Forge at 10, probably. Then at 11, he'll get Indom. Indom and Lone Wolf. Right, Claytox the Goon. Hit points is about right, that's fine. Defense. Goons get light armor, so nimble. Egil the Sacrifice. I wonder if I shouldn't just try to make him a ranged guy as soon as possible. But I mean, he's got really nice stats. Really nice melee stats for a polearm lad. So if he gets converted, I'm going to start marking sacrifices with a bracket S and then I can actually put you know, what I want to level them up as if they get converted. And for him, I think polearm. Or pole mace maybe. Paul Mace. We're going, we're all about the blunt weapons in this run through. His hit points and his fatigue are dreadful, but that's not uncommon for a rat catcher. He will be light armor and initiative though. But gifted is pretty much getting given to everybody. Look at these fucking dreadful stats. Ugh. Uh it's a power freak. Uh, 
Oh, that's right. Uh, he's brave. I don't want to level these lads at all. Probably not. Well, the caravan hand I do want to level up though. But we need then to hire someone else to be at the lowest level. The yarn A, the sacrifice. The, those are max rolls there with no stars. That's good. Even 60. Give him Colossus next. Gets him to 75. Loads of big losses, yeah. But whether that's through combat or through sacrifices. Um, so just, it's, it's all just sacrifices, really, that's dying. Flail Duelist was unfortunate. That was a brigand raider who took him out. Stobby dying was gutting as well. That was terrible. Sacrifice, and then two sacrifices to do three do Dovkul sacrifices. Uh, let's see. So, sacrifice. What does he have potential as? Like nothing, really. He is a sacrifice goon. And this is also a. I don't think he has the stars for dagger specialization. Well, f f high 50s at 3 is just about enough. Currently only got one dagger lad, and then it's just a bunch of daggers and flail lads. We've got the two sword tanks holding the outside flanks. Oh yeah, and um, followers wise, I want to get my third at 1400, I want to get the blacksmith. So that then I can start buying heater shields. And that's what's awesome about the, the blacksmith is when a heater shield gets destroyed in combat, you still have it, you just get to, re you get to repair it. And that makes like quite a big difference, you know? Those heater shields are like 400 gold. Uh, I don't want to fight gold. They want me to fight fucking... <sighs> right now isn't the time, I don't think. Uh, we'll hire him as a sacrifice. Oh, that's bloody great, actually. The starting accuracy is pretty dreadful, though. So melee skill, two stars is 30, plus uh, gifted is 33. So he'll have 81 accuracy at level 11. I think that could be a two-handed flail user. Let's see, resolve, two stars. Is four every every level up, so 44. It's 130 something. 137 minus 16 for a two-handed flail. 120 minus let's call it 38, 58. 120 minus 58 is 70 something. Yeah, okay, cool. So he's currently a sacrifice, but he will be a decent two-handed flail if we can get him there. Like this. I actually want Harad to get to level 6. As soon as he procs his caravan uh, event, we can get rid of him. Okay, so keepers are on the left, sacrifices are on the right. Well, right, donkey. He actually, I don't, we don't need another another tailor. Let's look at the backgrounds. I want to say I want to pick up a monk, but the monks fight with the cultists all the time. Uh, I think we need another minstrel just to keep morale up. We'll probably find a minstrel in one of the big cities. I don't want to do either of those two. Things. We come across a young man up in a poplar tree. He somehow managed to construct a tiny abode the size and shape of an outhouse up in the heights. Looking down at you, he nods. Yeah, you are incredulous about me and this here tree. Well, let me tell ya. Them web necks come fast. Spiders the size of dogs. You know what I said of that? Fuck all of it. You can find me in these here trees from now on. And if those damn beasts grow wings, I'll just up and off my own self. Thank you very much. Web necks seem to be driving the locals mad. Can't really blame them. 
There's another mission now to take care of webnecks. Like, the thing is, this is a good mission, and it pays well. Let's actually accept it. I normally don't like defending against raiding parties. Because I feel like you almost always end up just sitting around for ages, and then... Nothing happens, and it's super annoying. Is it enough? But we can see what it is we're defending them against, and if we don't want to take the fight, we'll just abandon the mission. That's a decent payday. This is exactly what I mean. Okay, so it is green skins. I hope it's orcs, not goblins. Ugh. 14 orc young. Ugh. That's pretty nasty. I might just give the guys kite shields so that the wooden shields don't get one shot. Or the one, sh the one, the round shield lads we can give spare shields to. So this is pretty cool. We got four flail specialists. Okay, three. Venthorn is actually a dagger lad. What should he be using? I think he's fine using the flail. Is that a bit loud? How's the music level? Please let it be a forest fight. might actually want to fall back to these bottlenecks. Running forward's not going to be good. If I run all the way back, then we can put one, two, three frontline lads. Three backline lads there. Yeah, let's do that. This is going to be quite fatigue intensive, and splitting up the lads is always a risk, but the bottlenecking is going to help us, especially with such a big group of, uh, of orcs. This means we're only going to be in contact with at most, let's say, I'll put the front line here, one, two, three, one, two, three, or five orcs at a time. Three front line lads, there they go. I think we want another front line here, lad, just to rotate out. Whoopsie. Fuck, oh, so Kratox just moved upwards now. He gets caught. He probably doesn't get caught this turn. This is going to be quite a long, drawn out fight. Actually, is that high ground there? That is. Maybe we put the front line. We put one, two, three, four guys. One, two, three. There. Two, three, four frontline lads. Uh, flail up there. And Zuma, stay where you are. Right there. Can you swap those two? Oh, that's a fuck up. These guys should have moved one back. Oh well. It does put Venthorn potentially surrounded by one, two... Well, he can only ever be in contact with two Orcs. That's not too bad. He's got high ground. He can't be knocked around. He's got a Sipar shield, which is just going to break. He'll get stunned once or twice as the new ones come into range, but, you know. Well, the thing is, Crimson Fangs, as you... Well, I mean, the, the, the forest is, is a real tactical boon in some situations. Like, if we were fighting against the Marksmen, it would just be, you know, forest of death. 
my, what a lovely forest of death you have. It looks like the whole group's gonna go north though, so maybe these guys down here really ain't gonna do shit. I think I need to leave a square open to invite some of them to come down here. Alright men, hold. Bear in mind, we don't have Indom yet on anybody. So a fair amount of us are probably going to get stunned. In fact, I should probably run Goabo up to cover that entrance. Technically, James could actually vacate this square. Yeah. So if, if, if any Orc Young wants to go into that square, they're more than welcome. They'll be one, two, three, quadruple surrounded. Just send go by up there. Let's not overreact. We've got to leave probably Egil, Sparrow 4, and Stobby to hold the southern part. But up here is definitely where it's going to get the spiciest. Ah! 93, rolled 99. Might actually be beyond us though. We don't even have a lot of level 7 lads. Do our best though. Come on! 94 rolled 99. <laughs> Come on! 73 missed. Lads, 91 missed. 81, 97, 91, 99. It's XCOM all over again. Hey! Finally we landed a hit. I'm going to start maintaining a shield wall here, I think. But I already broke his shield. Broken over. This is better. Oof, that axe is scary though. Mm. Fucking hell, yeah, my lads aren't can't do this. What's up, Devusar? Where's rotation? Oh, damn it. Ben Thorn has got rotate, but too he's too exhausted to rotate. Okay, at least that lad's fleeing, so only that lad can attack, and he's only gonna attack on the next turn. What the fuck? Eleven left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Southern lads, charge forward, please. Boa Boa also doesn't have rotation. I've really fucked up the leveling on all of these lads. One more hit and Kratox is dead. It's 
3 AP. 4 AP, so that's 7. Okay, cool, they're both fleeing, so Vanthorn is safe for now. Dodging boys. I suppose we're not going to start feeling the real power of this group of lads uh, until they get level 9 and they're able to start using Fearsome. I would hope that in a fight like this, Fearsome would have already broken this whole formation. It's already pretty much broken. You give your Bannerman melee defense. I used to give my Bannerman just range defense, thinking that enemy archers were the only threat to him, but that's not the case at all. In, in the bigger fights where you get swarmed, especially by like zombie and uh, other undead hordes, he needs to be able to go toe to toe. With 29 defense, damn good. There better not be another fight after this. Because we can't do another fight after this. The lads are beat up. Yeah, thanks, it's going right. We had almost had a disaster up there. I was surprised how much Vanthorn got hit, even with high ground advantage. She should have got extra defense. That's nice and cheap. Cool. So we've got some orc weapons we can go sell. Wait a second. Does everyone in the front line have bandages? Technically, I don't need a dagger, but it's good to have. Occasionally, you do need the dagger. Who's going to go on the front line? Probably the goon. Seventy-two. That's not bad. Fatigue is looking okay. This lad, yeah, he's gonna wear heavy armor. That's for sure. Uh, Bjarne the goon needs fast adaptation. James the goon, seven. Probably wear heavy armor as well. Or we could just start getting berserk. And then Berserk's gonna let us take on bigger fights right now. But he's still. The, sh the, the shitty thing, though, is he's a goon, so then he gets nimble. We're not gonna bother giving him heavy armor. Heavy armor is quite hard to come by. Unless we have a bit of luck.
Much better, Iman, thank you. What a relief, tell you. Uh, one to two days, three to six days. Where's hand axes? I could have sworn we kept hand axes. We're gonna need the B team to do some work here. Right, well, just grab a little falchion, if nothing else. Kytox and Vanthorn have earned some little R and R. The tool situation, pretty damn good. Now I'm going to try and follow the suggestion of one of my viewers, which is to keep a morning star in your inventory to, as a price gauge. Uh, it typically goes for 100 gold. So if you get offered less than 100, then the market is depressed. If they offer you more than 100, then the market is doing well. Uh, hand axe is under the clubs. No, we have we have we have one head splitter, but that's it. I think I needed the money and I had to sell them. We might as well get rid of the Nomad Slings. Uh, it's crossbows that we want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The Warbrand, that's good money. I need a third Long Axe, not particularly. I mean, I will eventually. I need a third long axe for tree ant hunting, but we are nowhere near hunting tree ants. Twenty so it leaves us worth seventy-four. Food is four days. Six days. That's tempting to pick up a bull hook, but hang on, what's our next big expense? I think we have two of two retinue. We have a recruiter and a drill sergeant. We got the recruiter with the hope that we would be able to find a uh, cultist. No luck so far. I've got to keep trying out these highborn guys. Try to find a dumb one. so annoying how you can't dismiss them. Uh, weapons wise, I don't think there's anything in particular we need, although it might be worth picking up a rondel dagger. Well, our one dagger lad already has a rondel. Where's the other dagger lad? Vanthorn is pretty close to actually one more level. And he can take dagger spec. He needs... Mm, he, really, he does need fast adaptation. How long till we get the blacksmith? As soon as we get the blacksmith, we can start stocking up on heater shields. Uh, let's see, our renown is 1346. And we need. 3, 3, 5, 0, 2, 2, 1, 4. We're very close. Okay, so we can start buying our Peter Shields now. Perhaps we just head off into the world to go do some exploring. I mean, we might as well. We've got a bunch of injured lads. What's this? Uh, a day to the northeast for 340. Oh, yeah. Two days to the north for 1,000. Oh, yes. Go do some exploring while we're at it. Oh, I'm 
dead. Many armored Vidigangos, one fallen hero. The Necromancer is friggin' scary, but I think we can probably get around him. That's a level three lad. Help, help! I'm being repressed! Bloody <laughs> <laughs> There's the, I was waiting for that. That's the new follower notification. <laughs> Welcome, you bloody peasant! Uh, you hired two cultists in the southern city. Okay. <clears throat> the caravan logistic. I think it cha changed for the better. Because now you can just straight up buy the bigger caravan. Buy a cart for 5,000. I mean, it takes a while and it's expensive, but we'll certainly get there. Right, okay, here's the play. We're going to have Goaboa, Egil, Mizuma, and James. No, wait. These lads are going to hold the front line. Those two and those two are going to do like a little bullhorn formation. Good tonight. Will you come with me to Camelot? Indra? <laughs> Welcome, loyal subject. Uh, does it not say where the fight will be? Because no, we are not fighting in the swamp. Fuck that. It's only 12 of them and there's no ghosts, so it shouldn't be that bad. How wide do you have to go to not aggro them? Yeah, there's a lot of scrammer sexes, that's pretty scary. Oof, that's fucking terrifying. Right, get him lads. point he was a cultist probably uh. Shields are going to be our best friends here, as long as we keep shielded up, we might just be okay. This is still very scary though. I want that armor, but this is not the time, I don't think. hit it's a post freeze uh, 39 minutes so far they are easy to design but we don't have a whip user on the field This is too much for us. The other thing is, I've, I've been playing with my peasants all day, so I have a, a mental mod model of where I am with my bloody peasants. I mean, you need to be kind of level 7 across the board to fight something like that. And also, not having any archers doesn't freaking help. 9, 7, 4, 7, 3, 8. Ones and twos and threes. 
You haven't missed much. We've just done a little delivery mission or two. Little delivery. Oh yes, nice. Uh, sitting with Radolf uh, Dagger for a few hours. Show him the darkness. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. And that means we've opened up another person. Not Herad, who was it? The Dagger Lad, where is he? There we go, Radolf. Who, who wants in? Have we got an M on yet? See. Get in your M on underscore. So let's see, 55. Okay, one point in melee skill means two and a half on average per level. Uh, he's got eight, eight times two and a half, 16, 20. That's actually a bit low for Daggery. I think he's just a goon, honestly. He's not that good. Thing is, he's, he's on the lower end of, of Dagger Lad mastery, but we do want a second Dagger Lad. We want we want one goon with X specialization flanked by two Dagger Lads. Uh, one Dagger Lad have to do this just to make him a goon. Not that good. Specific seed? No, I just I just took the one that was ge randomly generated. Awesome. So we're up to 10 out of 12 cultists. A couple more conversions. Maybe get lucky, find one or two more. So I, like, I want to get established. And in my mind, being established is going to be having 14 cultists, two of which must be ranged guys. A bunch of them are going to be goons that aren't going to have long-term potential. But that's fine. At least then we have a stable roster where we can keep hiring, hopefully converting, to, to replace the goons with high-level lads. A decent goon, but I mean, if I look at his stats and I think, does he, does he have the stats to go all the way? That'd be not, no. We've had four sacrifices in the whole campaign, actually. Three. One, two, three. Uh, dumb and quick. I mean... Poacher's count is lowborn, so I don't think I want him if he's going to be dumb. He's going to level up so fucking slowly. I quite like this, having four flail specialists. This makes us very strong against raiders. And actually, we should do quite well in the south as well, because... These Sipar shields are damn near impossible to break, but our flails will just go straight past them. Okay, so sacrifice goon and straight goon, not good. Uh, we've got a polearm lad, we've got so far sacrifice two-handed flail if he doesn't get sacrificed sacrifice pole mace Let's get some seasoning on him on then I think that th th there is a like, like a baseline amount of days but then you also have to be out in the wilderness so what it seems to me, I mean, we went almost 90 days without a, a sacrifice event. That's because we were sticking to the roads for the most part. Yeah, what is this? I'm done with terrorizers. Oh, that's good money. I hope this is spiders. Cheers, boys. Uh, 
Seguir. We are still in the long, hard slog looking for archers. There's a poacher here, but he's dumb. We only want dumb on the highborn guys. We don't want dumb on a lowborn guy. He's going to level so slowly. 17 die wolves. Yeesh. Our flail guys might have flail specialization, but die wolves are so difficult to hit. So I'd rather go for the consistent damage of the boar spear. A good go, boy. 73. Even with a missing finger. Not bad. Although really I should give out as many swords as possible. The thing is saying that Jorah, I at least know how to play the spiders. I'm pretty sure you, I'm pretty sure you, you would have seen me uh, initiate my spider protocol. Where everyone just use, uh, uses uh, a ball spear. Put your shield in, uh, in your backpack. Okay, now this is a complication. No! Oh, fucking, well, we should have plenty of rotation. This could actually play out well for us because we can rotate the injured guys off the front line. The western flank is a bit of a disaster area right now, though. The lack of rotation is a big problem, and it's, and it's really a huge error in half level. I needed to get rotation quicker. Please tell me James has rotation. Thank goodness. Okay, at least I've got these two-handed guys off the front line. Fuck's sake. Needs rotation, fuck's sake. This is very bad here. Yeah. Your boa is in dreadful da uh, danger. I'm not even gonna attack with him, I need all of his fatigue for him to just rest and let him keep his shield up for as long as possible. Hit! <sighs> Finally. These two are just going to shield up. They are not even going to attack. All their fatigue needs to be for keeping their shield up. For sake. Come on. This one seems to have pretty, pretty terrible defense. have rotation. He does. Okay, the morale breaking is super important for us. Event Dawn is done for. I have to redo this fight.
Shot. Yeah, the morale is broken, so only that one is actually active. God, if I can pull this off, I'll be so pleased. Uh, Dieter, the two-handed flail lad. Let's survive one more time, James. Yes! Clutch. That there is the big concern. Big blocking. Outstanding, Mizuma. Outstanding. <coughs> so, I just want to look at a goon real quick. And I was leveling... I think I went FA at level 1. I went Gifted at level 2. Then, for some of them, I went Shield Expert at 3. Then I went back for Student. Then I took Weapon Spec. It should have been immediately. It's got to be FA, Gifted, Rotation. Your first three level ups. That's how you get someone up to speed as quick as possible. Then you go back for gift for student and then you get, you know, other gravy type of skills. But like the fact that I've omitted rotation on a level seven guys is, is idiotic of me. And look at it, level seven, still no rotation. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> Right flank is fine. Left flank is really struggling. But at least now Van Thorn has gotten out of trouble. Ugh. <laughs> Fleeing. Guys are high enough yet. Nice. I mean, we're only getting fearsome. None of my guys are that high level yet. It's going to take a little while. We'll get there. But I hope I get at least six wolf pelts out of this. Eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At least the hounds. Fucking hell. shots hit here, he could die. Woo. Come on. Uh, I think for the most part, Sanajora, yes, but then there's some other modifiers as well, I think. Because I've had fights where it's felt like I've destroyed the armor of all of them. You still seem to get it though. So really, I don't know, is what I'm saying. It seems to be random for the most part. These axes are not what you need to hit these things though. I wish we'd be using pikes there. Well, of course, if you are fighting as the Beast Hunter origin, then you get extra chance for pelts to drop. Oh, nice. Well fought, men. That was a roughie. 
That's why Van Thorn gets hit so much. He's got terrible, terrible defense. Well, he's not using his dagger now, I think. Uh, although, Nimble is going to help him stay alive. So, Nimble is more important. Rotation immediately. Mm, got Nimble. A dagger lad does actually need fast adaptation. Although, does he? I think backstab will have to be enough. Go for Berserk. Gifted, always good. We love love a bit of Gifted. Yes, um... I think if, if, if any of our guys don't need Fearsome, it's the Dagger Lads, because obviously they're using Pierce, and they're going to trigger Fearsome anyway. It's the Flail guys that'll benefit the most from Fearsome, I think. Getting fearsome on the dagger guys, I think it's just a straight up waste. He's light, so let's just get Colossus on the next level, of course. Two-handed flail lad. Hmm. Jim Bar. Is the two-handed flail lad gonna need fast adaptation? No. Dodge Bannerman. His fatigue is pretty awesome. Yes, it will be good for for him though, especially with initiative being that not initiative, uh, resolve. So when he hits someone, it lowers their resolve by twenty four, even actually twenty five. Yeah, I was never a huge fan of the dodgy dodgy builds. I mean, modern is a dodgy banner type guy. I still think that heavy armor is the way to go. You, you absolutely can make the initiative dodgy builds work. I just don't see them ever, unless it's a brother who's an absolute superstar. I don't see them comparing to the kind of defensiveness of the heavy armor lads. I think we can make a, a profit off of 200 per wood. 222 is nice and cheap. Is this? I love a good escort mission. A day to the north. This is three skulls. Search the battle site. Free any prisoners. No, this this is too much for us right now. 58 minutes. Okay. YouTube folks, take a little break. This is your daily dose of you of Battle Brothers. Another episode tomorrow. 45 minutes to an hour long.